In the grand melee of fantasy literature, one sword struck a chord, or a nerve depending on who you ask, that echoed throughout the genre. Terry Brooks' The Sword of Shannara. This 1977 novel wasn't just a book, it was a declaration, a statement that fantasy was here to stay, and it didn't mind borrowing a cup of sugar, or a whole pantry, from its neighbors. Please hit like, subscribe, and smash that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. A not-so-distant mirror, echoes of Middle-earth. The Sword of Shannara didn't just tip its hat to J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle-earth. It practically gave it a bear hug. From elves and dwarves to a Dark Lord's quest for domination, Brook's world was like a familiar tune, played with a different instrument. Some called it homage, others called it something less printable. Either way, Brooks showed that fantasy had formulas, and they could be remixed, much like a bard remixing a classic ballad about dragons and lost crowns. The Hero's Journey, a path well trodden. Shea Olmsford's journey was the quintessential hero's journey. So quintessential, in fact, that it could have been used as a teaching aid in Hero's Journey 101. The reluctant hero, the wise mentor, the quest for a magical object. Brooks took these tropes and ran with them. It was a tale as old as time, but with a new set of boots. The ripple effect, inspiring generations of fantasy. What the Sword of Shannara lacked in originality, it made up for an influence. Brooks's success proved there was a ravenous appetite for fantasy, even for stories that felt as comfortable and familiar as an old cloak. It paved the way for a deluge of fantasy novels in the late 20th century, each trying to capture a sliver of Shannara's magic. The book was like a starter pistol for the fantasy marathon that followed. Legacy, a double-edged sword. The legacy of the Sword of Shannara is as double-edged as the sword itself. On one hand, it opened the floodgates for the genre, proving that the appetite for fantasy was not just limited to Tolkien. On the other, it sparked a debate about originality and inspiration in fantasy writing that continues to this day. Brooks's work stands as a testament to the genre's potential for both familiar comfort and innovative storytelling. The Sword of Shannara may not have been the first fantasy novel, nor the most original, but its impact on the genre is undeniable. It showed that the appetite for fantasy was not just about a single world, Middle-earth, but for an entire genre. Brooks may have walked a path well-trodden, but he left footprints large enough for others to follow. Thanks for listening. Drop your thoughts in the comments. To find out more about John Cronshaw, visit johncronshaw.com newsletter to claim your free Ravenglass Universe starter library.